All right, everybody, so welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. So today we're going to be talking about a question that I got the other day about where does shad go during the summer. So y'all know we're in the summer transition, so we got fish that are post-spawn, and then we've also got the fish that are already out on the main lake that are pretty much done with the post-spawn, so they're done chasing the shad, they're, they're doing the whole thing. Uh, the shad spawn's pretty much um, over with at this point. So we're gonna talk about where those shad go and where the bass like to go also. So stay tuned, this is something you don't wanna miss. Man, man, healthy little thing Look at this that bait. we just ran over, huh? Lake bait, because that's what I was doing. Yeah. More green. Right. This pond may have a problem too. Ooh, he almost got me under that tree. It might not run me. Yeah, yeah, run it down. Got him. Good one. Yeah, pretty good. Spinner bait palooza. Oh, he missed it. You gonna come back? No. Or look at all of them. Here you go. Got a little bit more backbone in him. Live well, sir.
Yeah, Alright everybody, so let's talk about where the shad go. So the, let's just say the shad spawns completely over with. It's full blown summer and uh, we're looking for um, the shad so we can find the bass. So they're typically going to be in the areas that you would guess. Uh, your main lake points, uh, the fish that are living in the creeks are typically going to be on your secondary points. Um, Typically, the docks that are not necessarily just in the ground, but um, floating docks. So, you know, docks that's got them black buoys under them that hold the dock up. There's no poles connecting it to the ground or anything like that. Those types of docks is great areas. And also riprap, uh, anywhere there's riprap. So whether that's a dam, a bridge, or anything like that, that's typically where those shad are going to be in the bass too. Now, here's the key. So this may be what you're missing when you're looking for those shad uh, during the summer part of the month. And that is the depth. You've got to figure out what depth the shad are at. So typically early in the morning, those uh, shad are going to be pushed up close to the top of the water. And that's the reason you're catching those bass on top water walking baits, um, uh, poppers and, you know, things like that, flukes and all that good stuff. But here's a little key feature. Any time that you have a good wind, a good, good wind that's not just blowed out, but, you know, kind of just a breezy day, and you've also got a good bit of cloud cover, those fish will, or those shad will typically stay close to the top of the water. So in return, you can still fish close to the top of the water. That's the reason you'll see me in the middle of summer throwing top water walking baits in the middle of the day. Now, that typically goes for threadfin shad, gizzard shad fisheries, which is typically what you're gonna be fishing. Now for blueback heron lakes, it's a little bit different. So blueback heron lakes, bluebacks like to roam and they typically stay close to the top of the water on bright blue sunny days. So on the days that you would typically try to fish a little bit deeper, um, those are typically the times that you're gonna fish uh, close to the top of the water on the blueback heron lakes. Now, with that being said, let's say you've got a blue bird sunny sky day and uh, you're trying to locate those shad. Typically, they're going to be in the same areas. They're just going to be rotating around the edges of the points and trying to find little key cover points on the points and secondary points and stuff like that on docks. So that could be just a shade line or it could be completely deep up under the dock. Um, and typically the baits that you would typically use, especially like on docks and stuff, I love to use a fluke. Wacky rigs are good choices. Anything that kind of gives off that shad vibe and something you can keep kind of close to the top of the water. Now let's say they're deep off of points. So let's say they're on the tip of a point. So the point comes out and then it comes straight to a point and then it just drops off let's say the point goes from two foot to 20 foot and then it just drops off into 60 okay those shad will typically suspend off of the edge of that point so where that point drops off at the 20 foot mark they're typically going to be out suspended in that 40 foot range and the bass are going to do the same thing so they may be the shad may be you know 15 foot but they're you know 15 yards off the end of the point and the bass will sit like 20 foot deep right up under those shad and they sit there and they look straight up and they watch those shad so you typically need to mimic that a good way to do that once you find those shad flutter spoons jigging spoons um swim baits crank baits anything that you can do to mimic those uh shad now you do have catchable and non-catchable fish this is one little key thing it's really really hard to get bass that are lethargic to bite. The good news is it's summer, so most of the time they're not lethargic. All you need to do is one fish get fired up and the rest of the school gets fired up and then you can sit there and catch a bunch. Now once you get those fish fired up, you need to keep firing back in the same area over and over and over again until they kind of disperse or they just quit biting. Once that's done, typically that point is or whatever type of uh, structure you're fishing, that is typically it for that area. You kind of have to move to another area, but the good news is you can pattern that. So if you figure out a way to catch them at one point, you can typically go to the other point and catch them the exact same way. So, you know, the ends of your points, floating docks, uh, lay downs on the main, um, Typically, what I focus on is the channel bends, okay? So when that channel swings right or out wide and, you know, you got like a deep bluff wall, kind of like what I have right behind me, these are good areas to target during the summer, especially if it's windblown. And that's the thing you need to understand, whether you're fishing a lake or a river. A river has a current system, and you can play those fish off of the current system, but a lake, you can do the same thing as long as you've got wind. So if you've got wind, it makes the shad real predictable because it creates a current in the lake and it pushes those shad up in areas that are very, very predictable. So if I see wind 
just blowing up against this bank right here, then I obviously know, hey, there should be shad on this bank. Then I'm gonna go down it, but I'm typically gonna go down it pretty fast and see if there is bass that's active because during the summer, don't waste a lot of time in one area. When you start wasting time, a lot of time in one area, then you're really gonna kind of burn through your day. So early in the morning, hit your uh, points, your secondary points. So, oh, any type of areas like that, your channel bends and stuff like that, you, that's typically where you're gonna find these fish super early in the morning. They're gonna live there pretty much for most of the, you know, summer season. But don't forget, you've got fish that live in the creeks. So there, it's no difference. So you got fish that live on the main lake, they die on the main lake, they spawn on the main lake in the same way in the creeks. Okay, so don't forget about the fish in the creeks. You can always, if the boat traffic gets too heavy, maybe you've got a little 16, 17, 15 foot boat or something and it's really hard to stay on the main. Don't be afraid to go into the creeks and treat these creeks like you're fishing the main lake, okay? That's what uh, me and uh, Spur Mountain Outdoors used to do when we were kids. Uh, we, all we had was a little 15 foot uh, Lowe's aluminum bass boat. You couldn't stay on the main lake during the summer. You get beat to death. Uh, you couldn't even stand up. You get thrown out of the boat. So we go up in these creeks and uh, we would fish the creeks just like they were, you know, main lake places. Now, uh, the creeks that have run-ins in them, so fresh, cool water running in, typically those bass are gonna pile up in there because it's heavy oxygenated and then there's also tons of bait in there typically, so you crawfish, and then you're also gonna have shad. So, either way guys, I hope that helps. If it did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a whole lot, gets me in the algorithm, helps the channel grow, which is super important. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Uh, if you're not, I really appreciate you stopping back by and I'll see you next time.